Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss the finals, maybe the final stage of the CBI saga, where Mr. Alok Verma has again been shunted out as a result of the Apex Committee, which had been entrusted with taking a decision on it. We had Justice Sikri, who seemed to have sided with the government on this, and Marikarjun Kharge, the opposition leader, who has submitted his dissent. Joining with us is Paranjay Guhathakutta, known commentator and a journalist, Ravi Nair, who's been commenting on various cases for us, including the Rafal case. Paranjay, if we look at it in terms of what would be called the norms of office, that if there are something which seems to show that there could be a basis for an inquiry against you, you should not be holding office. And the CBC seems to have given the report, there are certain allegations which have been made, which therefore go against Mr. Verma, and therefore he has been <coughs> shunted out to the fire department or some such thing. Now, how do you see this playing out, particularly in the context that this has been a very high profile case involving, as we know, various officials in the CBI, <coughs> Mr. Nageshwar Rao, who now takes over, also has allegations against him. Mr. Astana will be brought back. We don't know. He has allegations against him. So how do you see this in the context of all this allegation? Do you think that actually CBI is now a institution which, is, which has been so deeply wounded that anything it does is now going to lack credibility? I completely agree with that last part of what you said. The CBI, which is supposed to be India's premier investigating agency, the police agency, an armed force, is today its credibility is arguably at its lowest ever, historically. Now one can look at what is unprecedented about what has happened. Some things have never happened before and what has happened in, the rec in recent weeks has been unprecedented. The manner in which the director of the CBI was asked to leave his office, made to go on leave. Middle of the night. Absolutely. The manner in which the second in command, Special Director Rakesh Asthana, also had to be not, not continue in that post. The way in which allegations have been traded by these two top officers against each other, and then the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court comes in, reinstates in a sense Mr. Verma, and in barely 48 hours, the committee comprising the Prime Minister of India, in this case the emissary of the Chief Justice of India, Justice Sikri, and the leader of the largest party in opposition, Malikarjun Kharke. Justice Sikri and the Prime Minister are on one side, Mr. Kharge is on the other side. And so, in this 48 hours, all that Mr. Verma done has been now undone. He, he reinstated all the people who had been suddenly transferred. And what the Supreme Court had said, that he can't take any policy decision, but now that's the end of the story. Why did this happen? Why did this happen is the big question. Was it because there was apprehension that he might register a preliminary inquiry in the nature of a first information report on the Rafael case? The counter question could be what Mr. Arun Shori, Mr. Yashwan Sena, Prashant Bhushan, the uh, complaints that they had made to him was many weeks ago, many months ago. Why did he not act then? Were they fearing that he would act now? At one level, the government seems to have stuck to process. So he's been merely transferred. His term as the CBI director would have ended at the end of January. He's been transferred, home guards, fire services, etc. But that's on the surface. I think beneath the surface, there's a lot that is being speculated about, which is unsaid. Mr. Verma himself has gone on record 
He issued a statement uh, to the Press Trust of India, to the Indian Express, among others, saying that he believes the allegations against him are unfounded, that uh, that's one individual is responsible for these allegations. Now, he doesn't name anybody. Everybody presumes it's Mr. Asthana. Some people say behind Mr. Asthana, there are other important people, including the National Security Advisor, Mr. Ajit Doval. Everybody knows Mr. Asthana's proximity to the Prime Minister from his days in Gujarat. All of it has become so murky. It's unbelievable that it could become so murky. <clears throat> Everybody is now questioning, why didn't Mr. Verma defend himself earlier when he was given an opportunity before the Central Vigilance Commissioner because the Supreme Court had said the, the CVC would look into it under the supervision of a retired Supreme Court Judge, Justice Patnak. All of these have, I mean, everybody is trying to give her or his own spin to it. But at the end of the day, the CBI as an organization, its credibility is arguably at its lowest ever in the history of this organization. Ravi, before I get to the Alok Verma issue, which is of course the one which is in the headlines of all the papers today, what happens to Mr. Astana and Mr. Nageshwar Rao as a consequence of this, uh, shall we say, step? And what would happen to the, which uh, allegations as well as some credible evidence which Mr. Sinha, I think the DIG, had filed <clears> in the <throat> Supreme Court. On the Moen Qureshi case and the relationship with Mr. Astana and certain other officers, which raised issues that there was really credible evidence yes. against a Astana. And uh, as we know, this latest round is of course a continuation really of the Astana issue. More than what happens to Astana, what we have to think is, so by this order, which included uh, uh, Justice Sikri and the Prime Minister on one side and uh, Mr. Maligarjun Kharge on the other side as the opposition leader, they reinstated Nageshwar Rao as, as the acting, 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 di acting, acting director. director. And this is, this is serious allegations. There are serious allegations against Nageshwar Rao. There are serious cases of, I mean, serious allegation of uh, uh, wrongdoings against Nageshwar Rao himself. Then, I mean, if if, if Alok Verma has been transferred to uh, keep the integrity of the organization, it's if it is, you know, if it's the clean out, then why Nageshwar Rao? And in the case of Astana, uh, Mr. Sinha, M.K. Sinha, when he submitted the affidavit in Supreme Court, he clearly stated that there are transcripts of telephone conversation between him and various people. Him meaning Astana. Astana, right. And various people. Vari various people in the uh, Moen Qureshi case and the related things. Right, and, and one of the accused in that case himself filed the case with CBI, that of harassment by Astana. Yes. Um, may, may I just briefly here intervene and say, according to this unsigned note attrib attributable to sources mm -hmm. in the Ministry of Home Affairs, which was sent to journalists on WhatsApp late last night. It was mentioned that the CBI found evidence of influencing of investigation in the Moin Qureshi case. There was also evidence of taking a bribe of two crore, presumably yeah. by those close to Mr. Alok Verma. And the CVC was of the view that his conduct in the case is suspicious and there is a prima facie case against him. And uh, the CVC also felt that the entire truth will come out if a criminal investigation is ordered. No, but in that case, if you look at uh, the replay, which is they're already in public domain from Mr. Kharge said the dissent note which he gave, and that he is listing all the ten uh, allegations, mm -hmm. and six of them include this Mohan Qureshi case. It's not substantiated, and the majorly one which they say it's uh, you know uh, doubtful is the IRCDC case. Otherwise, almost all there are no I mean just they are saying circumstantial evidences. There are no other evidence for them. One minute, as the Home Ministry has alleged in this unsigned note attributable to sources. It says that in the uh, this railway case, the Indian Railway Catering and Tourism Corporation IRCTC case, the CVC felt that it can be reasonably concluded that Sri Verma deliberately excluded a name from the first information report for reasons best known to him. Now here once again, we are talking about a case concerning Lalu Prasad Yadav, right. who is right now behind bars. Right. In fact, that is where a lot of flack really did come about. Right. That why was Mr. Varma not proceeding against 
Mr. Yadav and his family in the IRCTC case. And the, what I remember at that time, it, what was said was that there is not enough grounds for this. This has been vetted by the legal department. Al 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 Alok Verma said that he started a preliminary inquiry, preliminary investigation into that before filing an FIR and there was not enough evidence to substantiate those allegations to file an FIR against him. Okay. Now again, what Mr. Malikarun Kharge has said, that there is in the allegation that there is exclusion of a suspect from being named as an accused in an FIR in the IRCTC case, the allegation has been substantiated, but it amounts to serious misconduct and warrants disciplinary and other actions. This is the findings. And the, the what has not been substantiated is that Vistam Verma allegedly tried to call off searches raids in Patna. In other words, as a layperson, is Mr. Verma being accused of indirectly favoring Mr. Lalu Prasad Yadav? And is that the reason why all this is happening? Okay. Let us go to the basic question. These allegations, how come all these 10 allegations came all in a sudden after October 4th? On October 4th, Prashant Bhushan, uh, Mr. Prashant Bhushan, uh, Eshwan Sinha and Mr. Arun Shori, they filed a complaint with uh, uh, CBI alleging that there are serious corruptions in Rafal, where the Prime Minister's office themselves are involved, Prime Minister himself is involved. On October 23rd, this, everyone calls it a midnight coup, even I would like to call it a midnight coup, Verma has been shunted out. Okay, right? it's very so, interesting, so, it's very interesting, and if I can you know, again intervene here, Ravi, why, why I'm, I don't want to, you want to continue. This is what Mr. Kharge has said. The Central Vigilance Commissioner Shri K.V. Choudhury was scheduled to go on a tour on Denmark on the 23rd yes. of October in yes. that evening. He abruptly and preemptively, <clears throat> without assigning any reasons, cancels the tour at the last moment, holds a meeting of the CVC at night, the Central Vigilance Commission. At 11 p.m. on the 23rd of October, Nageshwar Rao, Joint Director of the CBI, is asked to go to the headquarters in anticipation of an order of the CVC. 11.30 p.m. on the 23rd of October, the Delhi Police Commissioner calls his staff to Khan Market, Khan market. Align, al alerts them about a potential midnight operation. Around midnight, around 12 a.m., he receives instructions from the National Security Advisor. Mr. Kharge is mentioning the NSA's name. He doesn't mention Mr. Doval by name, but everybody knows who's the National Security Advisor. He is re supposedly received instructions to take over the CBI headquarters and the uh, officials of the Central Industrial Security Force attempt to prevent them from entering the CBI headquarters. This is information which we didn't know about. They are instructed ostensibly at the behest of the Prime Minister's Office and the National Security Advisor. And between 8 p.m. and 12.30 p.m., these orders are issued between 12.30 a.m. and 1 p.m. The CVC order is rushed to North Block to Secretary Personnel, Sri Chandra Mauli, who, from some, who for some strange reason continues to, to be in his office after midnight. And then Mr. Chandra Mauli then rushes to the PMO where the Cabinet Committee on Appointments headed by the Honorable Prime Minister is waiting to give approval to the CVC's order. And the order is issued at, at 2.30 a.m., the Central Vigilance Commissioner, Additional Secretary, Department of Personnel and Training, Sri Lok Ranjan, visits the CBI headquarters and comes out with the Joint Director, Nageshwar Rao, with files and records. According to Mr. Kharge, these facts need to be verified and ascertained. Yeah. More than verifying, it should be investigated. So what is the point here? Why was such a hurry in that midnight, on 23rd midnight, if you remember, on 23rd by afternoon, uh, people start to tweet that CBI might file an FIR or, or they want to inquire on the Rafal, uh, Rafal file based on the complaints by these three million personalities, right? 23rd midnight, this happened. Now, what, one minute, between the 4th of October and the 23rd, why didn't Mr. Alok Verma act? That is the counter question. No, it's a matter of just two we, weeks. You know, All right. Let's sort of park this question that what triggered this action against Mr. Varma. Right. There's credible ev you know, evidence, maybe, as Mr. Karage has said, that maybe there are extraneous considerations like the Rafal deal. Could be, could be other reasons. We don't know. The question before us is really at this stage procedures, that after all, since we are not sitting on the content of these issues, we are looking at the procedures being followed. And it does seem that the CVC and the government 
the senior officials in the government, including the prime minister, acted together to remove the CBI head in a way which the Supreme Court held was not in line with of the law. But this was not the law. This is not the way it should, he should have been removed without commenting on whether the removal was right or not. Was it warranted or not? It was a procedural issue before the court. Now, it's also interesting the court took two and a half months to give an order on a violation of procedure, which is really for the Supreme Court. 77 been, days. <coughs> should have been actually a 10 minute job. The procedures had been violated. It was clear that their judgment maybe one day, two days, but the procedural violation could have been corrected by the Supreme Court. And then Justice Gogoi. No, no, just hold on. Okay. The Supreme Court corrects the procedural violation, but tags on the CVC issue to it, CVC's report to it, which has not the substantive point in law in terms of the procedural violation. Okay. Now, two issues are linked, which were not actually linked. If CVC has something to say, of course, there is a way of doing it, but removal in this ma in violating the procedure was not the way to do it. Unfortunately, the linking was done by the Supreme Court, and it's also interesting. Supreme Court deputed Justice Sikri for it. We are not going to question why Justice Sikri instead of the Chief Justice, which is what the procedure was. Or, or, or should we question whether the Supreme Court reluctantly reinstated Mr. Lok Verma? You know, again, I'm not going to go into what was in their minds because that would need, shall we say, powers we don't have. And you might, commit, <laughs> you might commit contempt of court. <laughs> but all, all I'm uh, arguing is that here is a procedural violation. Now it, the content is being used to, shall we say, overcome the procedural violation. At the end of it, after two and a half months, what we really have is Mr. Alok Verma had a one-day tenure and we have somebody who has also been tainted, Mr. Nageshwar Rao, is in ch still in charge of CBI. If issue of taint while holding office exactly. is the issue, why Mr. Rao then? And Mr. Astana, against whom credible evidence seems to have been there, according to Mr. Sinha's petition yes. before the Supreme Court, as well as other evidences, we have to see what Mr. Astana's fate is, A. B, it's also interesting, there were six charges against Mr. Astana. Now there is only one under Mr. Nageshwar Rao's tenure. The second issue is, what about the people who Mr. Verma brought back in his one-day tenure, this That's current right. one, and what about the people who Mr. who Mr. Astana's people, who actually had the run of the CBI till now, what happens to them? These are questions which need to be answered because, you know, we cannot sit in judgment whether Mr. Verma whether did something, allegations or something are right or, or something wrong. We are really talking about A, the institution itself, which is CBI. We are talking of the procedural violations, which the Supreme Court has confirmed. We are talking of the undue hurry on October 23rd. We can also talk of the undue hurry in which Mr. Verma could have only a 12 hour, shall we say, tenure. Less than in the 48 CBI. hours. 36 <laughs> hours. Okay, 36 hours. I'm counting the waking yeah. hours. <laughs> as it were, you know? And well, it's also interesting that when you look at this, even this meeting was very hurried. He was given, there was seven days' time given. That's right. The Prime Minister. Precisely found two days of time from his extremely busy schedule. As you know, he has a lot of foreign travel to He didn't have time, time to attend the parliament. If you look That's at the last session, how many days he came to the parliament? At the last day, at 9 o'clock, he came to the parliament. He didn't have time. He was busy with his election speeches. Apparently, he was, he was so busy. And his foreign travels also take a lot exactly, of time, yeah. as we know. And, and, <laughs> and, and uh, as per the information what I have, uh, Mr. Malligarjan Kharge informed uh, the PMO that he will not be available for two, three days. And some, he had to travel out of Delhi for personal reasons. And it has been insisted that he must come on very next day. The court has given a seven days window. But the meeting took place at the very next day and without providing the details of CVC report to uh, That's Mr. Correct. Kharge. That's I mean, correct. Because there were two sets of meetings. Yes. And in the first meeting, Mr. Kharge said, where he are the reports? Have where are the papers? He, he, he didn't have anything to discuss. Now, there is one more point. On, on yesterday's meeting, it says that whatever the replay which uh, uh, 
Mr. Alok Verma has given to the CVC that was not distributed. I'm sure. Just no, one second, one second. Ravi, the Home Ministry is actually saying Mr. Verma was given an opportunity to respond, but he did not respond. Is that correct? You, you, you look at. You see, that's the earlier one when CBC had asked him to give a, a mm -hmm. response. response yeah. Then he was supposedly not given his response three times. That was mm -hmm. the argument. Right. He was given three times an opportunity to respond by the CBC, which he didn't respond. That's an earlier okay. issue. Okay. The what Ravi is referring to is in the meeting yesterday. Exactly. Mr. Varma's reply to ah, CBC okay. was not circulated. Not circulated. And from what you uh, told me that apparently uh, Mark and Karju, uh, Justice Mark and Karju, has said something about that. One minute. In a Facebook post, Mr. Markande, Justice Markande Karju, retired, claims that he spoke to his brother judge, and that is Justice Sikri, and with his permission, he is putting forth what he thinks are justice, uh, what he says are Justice Sikri's views, namely that Mr. Alok Verma was merely transferred. That a person can be transferred if there are some allegations against him without hearing what he has to say. And it's only in a question of a case being closed or a person being dismissed or a person even being suspended, then it becomes, I mean, the principles of natural justice prevail. Yes. But, but, but enjoy, then, then my question is, Mr. Nagesh Rao himself, is, I mean, there are a lot of allegations against Mr. Nagesh Rao himself. You know, I would like to take a different question, stance on this. Issue is not a routine transfer or a routine allegation. We are talking about the CBI head. We are talking of the CBI as an institution. Nagesh Rao right now is the head till uh, the... the Interim head. The Taylor new director is appointed. Yeah. But still, so, as of yeah. now, he's the head. So we <coughs> already talked about Mr. Nageshwar Rao, why is he there? What I'm saying is, Justice Sikri, with due apologies to the judiciary, Justice Sikri seems to be taking it as a routine transfer. We are talk of CBI. If, if what are, he has been attributed to him by Justice Kajju. Kajju is yeah. right. Precisely. The question is, if this is to be taken at face value, it seems we are not, we are missing the complete context, which is that the CBI is in a deep crisis. Three of its top officials are under the scanner. Various allegations are flying around. Cases have been filed in the Supreme and, and, Court. And, and probably, let me add, and even there, is, there is one, one more thing. You know what I mean? With this, with this case, the CBI is split vertically into two. If you look at it, one is the Astana's. We are lucky. If we are lucky, we don't know how many more groups it might split. Exactly. And, and, and just as a matter of record, two former directors of the CBI are also currently being investigated by the CBI itself. Ranjit Sinha and, yes. and, and Mr. A.P. Yes. One in the Mohin, Mohin Qureshi case, the other in the, the Colgate, etc., the, his guest register. Yes, please. Continue. No, that is Astana only. And the guest register is Astana. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Sinha. 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 Ranjit Sinha. Ranjit Sinha. Ranjit Sinha. Ranjit That's Sinha. what I'm saying. Ranjit Sinha and, and Mr. A.P. Singh. Yes. So, you know, we in this context, what shall we say, it's extremely innocent of Justice Sikri to say, well, this is a routine transfer, what's the big deal about it? And it, it really means that either he is not, if it is true, he is not understanding the significance of these decisions for the polit polity of this country as well as for CBI. See, uh, this, uh, this, the stance Prime Minister and uh, Justice Sikri has taken yesterday would have been justified if this was some other person instead of Nageshwar Rao. A person without, I mean, who's, uh, who's not tainted by any allegations. If that's the reason for them to transfer Alok Verma, so there should have been some other person, not Nageshwar Rao. Let me play devil's advocate. Yeah. BJP uh, leader Mr. Baluni is uh, now saying that, you know, why didn't Mr. Kharge recuse himself? Because he had earlier he? Uh, he had earlier opposed the appointment of Mr. Alok Verma, and and that uh, you know that that was uh, and and now he's uh, uh, that's, that's, now that's, questioning that's the actually method. Actually method that's, that's, that's actually to school no 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 wait wait wait, wait no 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 that's actually a very sad point you know now they are just actually this question raises the the debate is not about the question is not about one single individual right it's not who is Alok Verma Alok Verma's position the position he held that does matter. And if Kharge dissented, that dissent, I mean, as far as my understanding, reading his uh, dissent note, dissent my, no. yeah, dissent note, my understanding is that he is questioning the, the uh, process which led to his ouster. All right. 
Right. Yeah, I, I don't uh, even understand how the two are related, why, right. you know, his appointment. Just hold on. Mr. Kharge might have felt he was not suited to be the director of CBI. It does not mean, therefore, his removal on spurious grounds You're cannot be opposed. Absolutely correct. That's, that's why I'm saying this is a schoolboy level of debate, but this is what about of the worst kind. Exactly. Right? This, this, this is how, how the whole matter is being sought to be obfuscated you know, you know, by Paul, the ruling regime. Apologize. We know that the noise which comes from the television channels and from the BJP in different ways is basically to obfuscate the issues Absolutely, yes. and prevent a serious discussion of the issues themselves. Okay, right. So we get lost in what about tree? Why did you not do anything? <clears throat> the what is it? The Tukre Tukre Brigade. All of us are the anti-national brigade. Questioning this the is just like questioning no, uh, the PM is questioning the nation. All of these bogus, I, you know, discussions. It's, it's just like just like happen. now this um, the BJP IT cell trolls. If you if you just stand into any debate, the same. What happened in Malta? So it's just like, kind of like you're saying. Yeah. So. What happened? Well, who committed the original sin? We have to go back there. You see, so we are not going. We are not going biblically. See, there. the crux of the matter is, it's it's. We have to relook re what happened on twenty third. On twenty third, if the allegations were the main reason, the CVC report is nothing new. It's not. It, it's not that it just came on twenty third October. It was there. Why didn't the government? Why didn't the PMO under which CBI comes in? Right? Why didn't they act then? Why? And if they had to act, why there was a there was a so-called midnight coup at, at why not twelve wait thirty? To do it to the proper right on that on that time. If why had to, do, why didn't in they? The morning? Yes, why didn't they call the committee then? Well, right. Let's let's say. Give and why should one more one more thing? Why should why should NSA? Why should NSA call? What is the role of NSA here? Yes, that needs deeper so, investigation. A whole number of questions are there, but moving beyond those questions, let's talk about the last, to me, the most important issue, that after this, anything the CBI does is going to be questioned. There's nothing that the CBI can now do to really recover. Probably, let me ask you, do you trust CBI now? Simple question. Not with this leadership, clearly. That's, That's the question. That's no, the no, question. now the question is, and here I'm trying to take this discussion forward, do you think the perception that the reason for Mr. Alok Verma getting transferred to be in charge of Home Guards and Fire Services was an apprehension or a fear that he might look deeper into the Rafael case. That within, is the, within the that few, is really... The, within the few days that will, could be could be at his disposal. It, it, is that a possibility? Yeah, you know, leaving, again, question that can't be answered, but I will say the question that can be answered. If this government is serious about the credibility of the, shall we say, the caged parrot, that was the Supreme Court uh, statement once upon a time, then it needs to create a credible leadership of the CBI. What it has done or what it is doing does not seem that it is going to go down that route at all. In fact, it's brazening out the ouster of Mr. Verma illegally earlier and now quasi-legally, shall quasi-legally, shall we say, and is going to continue with its partisan capturing of the CBI if we take what Mr. Verma, Mr. Sinha in the Supreme Court all of this into account, and we take Mr. Astala's own record, which seems to be problematic at this stage. I don't think the government is in, in any manner trying to rectify the image that it has created for CBI. And therefore, the question that you are asking, will now CBI really take up any of the allegations, Rafal and various other allegations that might be there against the government? And if I can briefly add the collateral damage. There's already a perception that the most powerful civil servant in this administration, this regime, is Mr. Ajit Doval, the NSA. Now, what does this mean? Okay, after all, he has a background in the Indian police service, point number one. What does this do in terms of perception with the other civil services? You know and I know, we all know that the Indian administrative service has seen itself to be a notch above the rest, be that as it may. What does it do to what is happening internally? You know, there were people who have been directly recruited into the CBI. The example is Mr. Bassi, who was looking into the allegations against Mr. Astana, and he had been uh, transferred to Port Blair. 
and and the Supreme Court said, you know, enjoy yourself. Port Blair is a nice place, kind of thing. But the point is, Mr. Bussey is a direct recruit. He is he going to be tainted henceforth from as being Mr. Alok Verma's man because. It's fighting between two IPS officers. What happens to the professional investigators within the CBI? And that too has now been badly damaged. That's what I said. The CBI has been split vertically into two. Because now, now it, is, it is portrayed on this way that a certain section of officers are, uh, you know, uh, this is Verma's side, which was anti-governmental as of now, the, the, the view inside CBI. So it's anti-government and uh, the others are the supporting of government, which is of Astana's side, uh, the integrity, I mean, what to say, it's gone. You know, that is the, I think that's the, the biggest tragedy, part. along with various other institutions. This is an institutional damage which Mr. Modi's government has done, which will be very hard to undo. And for our viewers, I must say this, that within the government, people are saying, this is not just one wing of the government. This is an armed wing of the government. And if this kind of fractures takes place in the armed wing of the government, then we have really far the, more the, of one point. The uh, premier investigating agency, the premier police investigating agency, yes, please. The, the, the uh, one point we missed is the CVC himself is tainted. There yes. are allegations There's a chapter CV. in my book on this. Yeah. I, I think it's a good time to plug the book <laughs> yes, all over yes, again. Yes, yes. yes. So, so we, there, there, are, there are enough allegations, there are enough, and a few of them are substantiated against the CVC himself. And this, this ouster is based on a report of that CVC. Which also has charges against it him. Is. So those, as I said, this is, uh, this is a really sad chapter in India's governmental history. We don't have time today for further He's being very diplomatic. Let us say very clearly, this is actually political witch hunt. Well, as you know, that uh, I do think political witch hunts occur, uh, as, as my history... But, but in the process, that, that institution yes. is, has been decimated. Yes. It's yes, I destroyed think, completely, I, decimated. I think, you know, witch hunts do happen under various administrations. When they take into uh, their they take place against uh, an armed wing of the government and the premier investigation agency, I think all of us is far more cause to worry. Thank you very much for being with us in this discussion. We'll continue to keep under the scanner sure. this and other steps this government might take. And of course, the Rafale issue on which I hope to have both of you with me again. Please do keep watching News Click. This is all the time we have for News Click today.